for many of us across the country, as the days get shorter and those water temps go down, the vegetation starts to die off. So what do we do? As that sun gets lower in the horizon and the vegetation that we've been used to fishing all spring, summer, and early fall starts to die off, we can start to panic because that's where we've caught so many fish. But this is actually good news. When this happens, when that vegetation disappears, as bass anglers, we know exactly what's going to happen and where those fish are going to be located. The lake beds now suddenly are completely barren. There's maybe just a few stalks of vegetation around, but really not a whole lot. So where do these fish go, especially the largemouth? They're going to pull on to anything that is hard, hard cover. For most bodies of water, this is going to be one of two things. It's going to be docks and dock pilings or some sort of timber like laydowns. We haven't really talked much about this in recent weeks because for a lot of fisheries, bass are so keyed in on bait fish. But for many anglers, they don't have big schools of shad and gizzard shad, threadfin, alewives, that sort of stuff. Their primary forage base is probably bluegill and minnows. Well, when that vegetation dies off, that means it's a good idea to go ahead and pick up a jig again. This is a wonderful, wonderful bait when the bass are no longer in the vegetation and only on hard cover. Well, how come I would fish this as opposed to some sort of bait fish imitator this time of year? Well, when we're targeting pilings and laydowns, a jig can cover the full gamut of the water column from shallow to deep very, very quickly. And oftentimes those fish are going to suspend part way down. Maybe they're going to hug right to the bottom. Maybe they're going to hang jump just up underneath of the dock or as far as lay downs go in brush piles, maybe they're going to be back up shallow where that lay down meets the bank, or maybe they're going to be farther out on the ends. And a jig is one of the most efficient lures that we can use as anglers to cover all of those different types of situations. As we can see here, this footage I've showed you in the past, but if we take a look at this ladder right here, we can see that this largemouth pulled around this ladder on a dock and is sitting exactly on a rung parallel with the rung. A jig is ideal for this because we can drop it so close to that ladder. And when a fish is sitting like this in a resting mode, if we're six inches away, a foot away, there's a good chance they aren't going to do anything. But if it drops right by them and flashes right in front of them, they could possibly react to it. So as we're fishing our jigs during this time of year when they're no longer in vegetation and on docks and on wood, we want to be supremely accurate with our cast. If you miss your target, go ahead and reel it in and put it back in there again and again and again. And like I said, the dock pilings are, are absolutely key. They just like to move up and down those and relate to some sort of hard cover when those grass beds are all gone. The other thing that's so nice about this fall pattern when they're on the hard cover is that if we don't get bit on a dock, move right on down to the next piece of hard cover. If you've got a lay down tree and then 15, 20 yards of nothing and then another lay down tree, go from lay down to lay down, dock to dock, just move right along and focus on those key pieces of hard cover. You're playing the percentages. Odds are they're gonna have fish relating to it. And in those in-between places that, you know, in July had a massive grass bed, it's no longer there. So just move right on through it. And you know that every cast that you make this time of year when the vegetation is gone and you don't have scores of bait fish like shad and gizzard shad threadfin is you know you're making high percentage casts and it's just a matter of time before you really start to pick off some nice fish because they're relating to the only thing that is left. Now as far as the type of jig that I like to use when I'm really fishing this particular pattern, 
I like to keep them fairly compact. So this particular twin tail grub that I have on here for a trailer, I snipped it off. I cut off about a half of an inch and then threaded it on here. And it makes just a really nice compact fall, really bite size. And I'm going with straight natural colors. I'm not going with those tense, bold colors that maybe I would have used in the springtime or in the early summer. I just want it to look super, super natural, and I'm going to fish it as close to the cover as I can. I'm a huge fan of the quarter ounce size. This is actually a quarter ounce Bitsy Flip Jig. I know a lot of guys like to start with a half ounce and then scale it up or down for that from there, but I just have really good luck with this quarter ounce size. In ultra clear water, if I'm not getting bit on this one, I will jump up to like a half ounce to increase that rate of fall and try to trigger more of that reaction strike as that lure flashes by the bass as it goes on down. If you like underwater footage of bass, go ahead and check this one out here on schooling bass. We took it earlier in the summer and there's just some really cool things that we can learn by watching and observing schools of bass underwater. So check this one out right here. And hey, don't forget to go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For the Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.